to see if the agents are hitting their goals, where yeah. they're at. Um, you know, if they're hitting their goals, then we know, okay, what's happening is happening. But if we see that they're not exactly at where their goals for the year are, that's where we know, okay, what aren't they hitting in them? Let's put more energy into that. How can we help them? What training should we do for them to help them yeah. get those up? How do you recruit and retain happy agents? I'm on a mission to answer that question by talking with the unsung heroes that empower real estate agents. I'm Seth Price. Tune in each week as I sit down with back office heroes to learn what's working and what's not. Teresa, I'm super excited to have you. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. Um, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. So the reason that we got connected is um, we've got some mutual friends and I kept asking and, and I've been asking this question. It's like, hey, who knocks it out of the park um, running their back office and your name has come up multiple times. So that's the reason I wanted to chat with you. And I'd love to start by if you could tell me a little bit about the Summers team and sort of what its makeup is and what your role in it. Of course. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Teresa. I'm the director of operations for the Summers team. Uh, we're a real estate team based out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We have 21 agents. And then our back office has three admins, including me. And then we also have a full-time marketing company that does our marketing. Um, so that is the, we also have two rainmakers. So I should say that we have two rainmakers, two team leaders, and the 21 agents. Um, are the, are the team leaders, are they owner producers? How does that work? Yeah. So, um, Chris, he definitely is a producer. Okay. Um, Stephanie, she was a producer. And then I want to say in the last year, she stepped back, um, taking on any new clients and just yeah. working her past clients and really helping focus more on the admin of the team with me. Yeah. Um, she and I, you know, oversee mostly like the marketing stuff together um, so that Chris can focus more on his production. And you, how long have you been there? Uh, so I'll be with the team. It'll be seven years next year. Oh, I bet you've seen a lot of change. Yeah, it's been it's been crazy. When I first started, there was seven or eight agents. Yeah, um, and then it was uh, they had a full time assistant that then I was the part time assistant too. So started off just filing paperwork, you know, filling yeah. out conveyancing forms, um, and really saw the whole industry go from you know paper these giant folders you had to bring to settlements, and now being able to see everything virtual. Um, yeah, it's been it's been crazy. How long did you sort of run things with a, I'll say a one person team, but yeah, sort of a one person back office team. How long did you do that? I wouldn't say the first five years were as oh, that way. Yeah. Um, and we were with a Remax office and then mm -hmm. we went to, uh, we switched to Keller Williams. Yep. And, you know, if you're familiar with Keller Williams, they have amazing programs and support. Yep. And uh, Chris and Stephanie, you know, thankfully hooked me up with a coach and working with her, you know, she, it's just been, it's been insane. She's really helped me be able to create this back end that has the flow of these transactions be so seamless yeah. where, you know, everyone can just focus on their specialties and not have to worry about, uh, you know, paperwork all the time. <laughs> yeah. What was like, when you think back and you made those early hires, what's the first hire one should make in your mind after you? So let's say you're in and you're like, you're going to organize everything. Who do you hire first after that? Yeah. So I was thankful enough that when I started Chris and Stephanie, they already had a full-time marketer. Okay. Um, and I know that that is very, you know, I don't see that very often with other teams where, yeah. um, you know, they typically, you know, someone in my shoes would also be handling the marketing. Uh, I never had to have, you know, a full-time handle on that side. So I, you know, just from seeing how my day-to-day -day is, I would say if you have someone in my shoes doing the marketing, get someone who's a specialist in the marketing and hire someone to do that and yeah. let, you know, us handle the processes and back end because my brain is just not marketing. And, I, and when I hear yeah. that, see that I, I, it confuses me because I'm like, I wouldn't be able to be as successful as I am if I also had to focus on marketing and come up with creative ideas when I'm a very math, you know, I yeah. spreadsheets and it's like if you were telling me I had to come up with a you know a cute 
cute caption for a photo, I'd be like, that's going to take me three hours. Yeah. I don't know. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it sometimes seems like a different mindset, like that sort of, I don't want to say it's whimsical because marketing is also has a measurable component, Mm-hmm. But capturing someone's attention is very different different than being super organized. Yeah. And I mean, it changes so fast. You know, new social media sites are coming up. And I feel like it's put so much in to know, you know, what's now capturing audiences and understanding how to, you know, target on them and, and get to your audiences. It's a it's, it's just a whole different world that um, I know I wouldn't be able to manage and do a, a, as well of a job as those that specialize in marketing. So when you think about, so we put marketing aside, what do you see your, like the primary purpose of your role in your organization, like your back office organization's role? Like, what do you, like, if you look at the end of a quarter or a half a year, what do you say? We did a fantastic job of what, what's the thing that you want to, want to have accomplished? Uh, is it getting uh, closed transactions? Yeah. Um, so, you know, we know our agents are really great at sales. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they're not the best at organization or at keeping things in line. So, it's- so polite. <laughs> I love that. And also, you know, delivering that extraordinary client experience. Yeah. It was the first thing when I started working with my coach that she helped me understand is, you know, that the admin team is creating that extraordinary client experience that our clients will have transaction over transaction so that no matter if, you know, John Doe works with agent, you know, Bill um, yeah. in transaction and then decides, you know, for their second transaction, they want to go work with Sean. They're still getting the same great experience. experience. Yeah. They know the level of service they're going to get because the back end is what really helps create that. So that when you are working with us, you get through the transaction smooth and you know exactly who, um, you know, should be the one, you know, you should be reaching out to for any specific questions. How do you, because one of the things that I've seen be a challenge is the handoff for the client. Like they speak to, let's say I'm the agent, they speak to me, I do my razzle dazzle. They love me. They want to list their house with me. Thank God, because it's a tough market for listings. (laughs) And then I have to hand them off. How do you guys handle that? Yeah. So I encourage the agents, you know, when you're first meeting these clients, whether it be in your buyer consult or the listing presentation to give them, you know, kind of an idea up front of how that flow will go. Yeah. The agents, whether, so say if you're a buyer, uh, you'll be with the working with your agent up until you get, um, you sign agreement of sale. And then at that point, Nick will send an email introducing himself, giving you a beautiful timeline of your transaction, you know, clearly stating anything he needs from you. Um, so it's really just that first email uh, once we once we're you know notified of that to get the transition over. But the agent's always included in every sort of communication. So yeah. no matter what, they'll always see that their agent's right there, also there. It's just that Nick's the one that's probably going to be responding up until you know settlement. And does the does Nick because I I mean I've seen it done really well a bunch of times, but I've one of the things that I've always wondered is. Okay, so you've got email, great, you know, source of truth and everybody can be looped in. Do clients also communicate with you guys via SMS or or phone call or or do you try and keep it just to that? Yes, we definitely love the paper trail of email. Um, That is why it is what we try to typically use. Uh, We have clients, though, that just, you know, don't use email or aren't. So we will adapt to whatever the client's, you know, ways of communication are. Uh, But I would say, you know, even 90% of our clients, the email works smoothly. um, That where, you know, if they do need to get on the phone call, they know they can, but we don't seem to have that issue where Nick needs to get on the phone with, with a lot of the deals. Yeah. And with 21 agents, how do you, I mean, besides just the normal flow of, Hey, you know, you have listings or, you know, you're under contract. How do you decide? Like, how do you track who's performing, who's doing a great job and where to put more energy? Because they are individuals and they don't all perform at the same production level, maybe that's the right term. How do you look at those numbers and make your decision on where to put your energy? So like my energy into the agents? Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, we use CTE to track all of our transactions. And okay. I started, I implemented that at the end of 2019. And it is What's just, CTE, just so I can. So yeah, it's a program, um, CTE. I don't even know what it stands for. My co- it's, not, it's a program my coach got me um, uh-huh. onto, but it's this amazing um, program that you can input the, your transactions um, and it just then puts it out into graphs so where you can pull all your data, see everything. So it, the one thing it does is after we put in all the transactions is it has a tab agent scorecards. So okay. I look at those um, quarterly to see if the agents are hitting their goals, where yeah. they're at. Um, you know, if they're hitting their goals, then we know, okay, what's happening is happening. But if we see that they're not exactly at where their goals for the year are, that's where we know, okay, what aren't they hitting in them? Let's put more energy into that. How can we help them? What training should we do for them to help them get those up? So really just the numbers, you know, I really believe numbers give you a lot of information and as soon as you have it, I just, it's really changed it for me because before I implemented DT and got, you know, our listing manager and transaction manager, to work together with me to get all the data in there correctly. I really couldn't tell what was going on with the agents unless I yeah. asked them and they were open enough, you know, but the numbers, you really see it without even having to ask questions. You can't hide. Yeah. <laughs> how do you, how do you help someone who's underperforming? Like what, what do you, how do you have that conversation for one? And then how do you put together a playbook to sort of improve where they are and help them get out of, you know, we could call it a slump. They may not, it may be a state that they're in. It may not be a slump, but how do you, how do you help them shift? So it depends. I would say it depends on where I see that they could use some help. So, you know, if I, if they're having a ton of appointments that week, but they're not having any conversions, yeah. what's going on in your appointments. So let's talk about scripts. Do you under, are you not saying the right thing? You're not asking enough questions. You know, we're really big on the scripts. Um, if they're, you know, getting a lot of deals under contract, but not a lot are closing. Okay. Yeah. Are you having issues with home inspection? Again, scripts for the home inspection. Like, can we help you with that? So yeah. really based on where it is, just tailoring, you know, a training, you know, and examples, um, you know, the team, you know, we are really much a family. And so uh-huh. it's also just examples, you know, if an agent is saying, this is really where I'm struggling. You know, senior agents who have had that experience will step up and give their advice as well. So leaning yeah. on the team for things and then also just remembering, you know, what we've been taught in the past and reminding them, oh, well, you know, maybe you need to just freshen up on this and, and you know, help with your whatever it is that they're having, you know, trouble with. Do you um, do you have certain team members be part of the training process as well? Sometimes. Yeah. If- the specialty of theirs. Yeah. Um, you know, we have one agent who's really good at home inspections. Like he just has a really great script on how he can help clients understand that and, you know, get their wants out of it. So when we knew we wanted to do a home inspection training, you know, I asked, I asked him if he could, you know, kind of do it with me so that he could share his examples. Cause he, you know, he's, you know, and, and a better master at that than I am since I've never yeah. actually been in sales. Yeah. I know how these transactions work. I know how a home inspection works, but I don't have past experiences to, yeah. look, to you know, help give, you know, teach from that. Um, and same thing, you know, we had some cl- agents that were working with investors and wanted to learn more about cap rates. Yeah. We had, you know, one agent who is really great at cap rates at making them. So same thing, asked him, would you come on and, and you know, share your knowledge with us and then, you know, do a Q&A. So it if they, if I know that they have extra knowledge in that subject, I will definitely and ask. And you'll bring them in. Yeah. And do you keep, because it seems like you have, um, well, one, you have the seven years of experience. You have a lot of information in your head. How do you keep all that organized? Like what's your, what's your operating system for making sure not only do you understand the CT data, but you understand what you did with someone in the past and what you should do with them later? Yeah. Time blocking, A. Time blocking is just how I know everything gets done. Um, okay. I live and breathe by my calendar. It's the, That yeah. tab is always open. That is how I'm getting through my days. And when I have something on my calendar to say to do it, I do it. You know, no distractions. Do not disturb is my best friend on my laptop and phone. 
I'm uh-huh. doing this thing where it's that important. I'm like, no, I'm getting it done right now. And um, that, is that what you mean by time blocking or you just, you schedule time in your calendar? Mm-hmm. Like, yep. All day. So it, like it, when I first started time blocking, I was so crazy where every second of my day was accounted for in my calendar. Yeah. But it got to the point where I almost was like, I, it was too much control. Like, yeah, that stresses me out. Yeah. It was like too much. Um, so it's not every second now, you know, like some days I don't want to eat lunch at right at noon. So if I don't want to no. eat lunch, you know, I'll move it around. That's why it's always open. Cause I'll move it around. But yeah, time blocking, just knowing if I, so repeating tasks. So check yeah. the team's numbers. You know, I, we, my transaction manager puts together a spreadsheet that then on Tuesdays, I look at and then send it out to um, our team's coach. So it's like that is an event every Tuesday to make sure it happens. Because I wouldn't remember if I didn't have a reminder come up. That's something that I realized early on. Like, I just won't remember. So I rely heavily on my calendar and just, you know, automatic reminders to do things. My email is just, you know, organized and crazy labeled with folders. Everything just goes in there. So if I know I need to refer back to it, I know where it's at. Because I don't remember everything. I just organize it in a way that when I know I need that information, I can just pull it. <laughs> I think I need to say in my life. I mean, <laughs> you see, you see, I mean, my brain doesn't work that way. I mean, it, it makes me think that this hiring for your role, it's almost like you sort of need a personality test <laughs> to see if some, see if it's a good fit. Like how would you hire a you? If you were looking to find someone that could do time blocking or that could be trained to do time blocking, maybe they don't have the experience. How would you determine who would be a good fit and who wouldn't? You know, that's an interesting question because I, you know, didn't just stumble into this role, but I didn't, you know, I didn't go to college and was like, I'm going to be the director of operations for a team. It was, I didn't even know this was something that existed. Yeah. I didn't even know that I, that I had what it took to be able to do something like this, but I would say, you know, definitely you just have, you have to be organized. You just have to be organized. If you're not organized, you're not going to be able to make it through, through being able to keep everything clear and straight. Um, but you know, I will say, you know, we do do a personality, like it's it's not a personality assessment, but Keller Williams has what they call a KPA, the Keller personality assessment. So we actually do ask people to take that before we hire to see that because we do know how important that is for certain roles. Yeah. Um, So I guess I would say I would have them take that and see if it aligns with, you know, mine and they match with, with the role. Um, I've never had to hire a me. So I haven't put much thought into that. <laughs> but you've, you've hired a you've hired a couple of folks to be part of the team. How did you? How was that process for you? Was it like first the first hire? They're still with you, or did you go through a few iterations to find the right person? So thankfully, our transaction manager he was working um, as an kind of like as a second assistant with yeah. me before we decided to make this role of the transaction manager. Yeah. I had already worked with him for two years, knew he had a great worth ethic and was organized. And so he just kind of slipped perfectly in, into that role. Yeah. But with our listing manager, it was the first time. And, um, you know, I did an extensive inner like application process with them that I had never personally done before. So it was a learning experience for me as well, but it was, really based off of that KPA that we ha- I asked the applicants to take. And it was a combination of seeing if they could do the role, but also if their personality would fit with our team. Yeah. Culture is just as, you know, important as the skills for the role. Yeah. Um, and so I spent with each applicant, I met with them three different times for about an hour each before making a decision because I knew how important that also was um, after I knew that they had the the technical skills to do the job. And um, we hired our listing manager, I believe it was August of last year. And thankfully she's been a great fit. So I haven't dealt with somebody not being a fit and leaving. Yeah. Um, But uh, our, unfortunately our transaction manager is moving on to being, you know, a full-time agent at the end of the year. So I may have a different story next year at this time. <laughs> well, are they, filling his as role. long as they're staying with you, that sounds like a win. 
Yes, yes, he is staying with us. Yes. So you're getting you're getting props from Chris. Uh, he's saying that you are definitely a rock star. Um, I'm going to ask a question that may be a little embarrassing, but how do you manage up? Like, how do you manage? You know, like a lot of times, either you know, team leaders or or rainmakers or owners, you know, they've got their own chaos around them and maybe not always super clear about what the objectives are. How do you process that and then continue to manage them and your job? What advice do you have there? Yeah. So um, Chris, Stephanie and I, we meet every Tuesday at 9 a.m. from 9 to Uh 10. And that is my one hour a week where I know I have their undivided attention. And so that is my most prize hour of the week where I know I can get a bunch of those questions (laughs) that I have about the chaos answered, solidified, and then I can be on my way, you know, for the rest of the week to get things done. Um, But, you know, I think it also comes with how long I've been with them. I mean, Chris and Stephanie, you know, I look up to them so much, you know, I care for them so much. And um, I know that if I, if I just call and ask, I'll get the answer. So even though sometimes, you know, if he's in a meeting, we can't get together, it's just communication, you know, knowing that, okay, you can't answer right now, but you'll get him in an hour and you'll, you'll have the answer then. So just finding your communication route. And, you know, sometimes I do feel like things are just a little too crazy. I'll be like, Hey, Chris, let's schedule time. Let's just, you know, let's just get back. You know, just seems like things are getting too crazy. Let's just get back into our, you know, into your room. Yeah. yeah. And like, and just reconnect and, and get things aligned. So it's just, I think communication is number one. Yeah. If I, if I am having an issue with something, I just have to be honest about that. And then we all work together to correct it. And then we can all just, you know, continue on with what we have. To do. It's so funny. You use those words. So my, I have a, a few kids and my daughter was home from, from school and now she's at camp. She's 16. She does this, or she's done it a few times, this skit, which is mimicking me in meetings, talking about how we need to get aligned and we need to grab. It seems like we're not aligned right now. And so she does this whole thing. But I agree with you that it's it's almost like we we imagine what our counterpart is thinking, but, but sometimes that's not right. Like they've moved on or they've grown or they've evolved or changed strategy, but we're not on the same page. And so you've got to like sit down in front of someone and go, okay, what are you trying to accomplish? Because I want to make sure what I'm trying to accomplish actually works together. Yeah. Um, she makes me laugh so much. <laughs> got to yeah. get a line, Papa. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Cause it's, you just, you don't even realize it. You just get yeah. so, you know, we, you know, what both of us are doing is so important, but you just yeah. get so caught up in what only you're doing. You sometimes forget. It's like, oh yes. let's. And, and conversely, what's the, um, what's the sort of communication structure for you and the rest of the team? Yeah. So we have a Slack channel that I would okay. say is our number one way of communication. It's just, okay. Fast, easy communication. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with Slack, but it's kind of yeah. like a instant messenger. Yeah, we live um, in Slack. So totally. yeah. So we have, you know, back when we probably only had 10 agents, they were like, these group emails <sighs> is too much. The replies and like it's so long. And yeah. someone only replies to me or not everybody. So they were just complaining. And I was like, well, I have to talk to you guys. Like I have information to give you guys. Yeah. So Slack was the alternative and it makes it easy, but the agents know that they can also call or text me whenever, email me whenever. Um, I mean, we definitely, we meet, the team meets every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from nine to 10. So that's also a place where they know they can ask a lot of questions. Can Um, I ask you a question about that? Yeah. How many people show up and participate? It definitely varies. Yeah. I would probably say out of the 21, we average about eight. Okay. Normally, but we recently started, I want to say two months ago, we started that the Wednesday calls are a focused topic. Yeah. So whether that be a topic that just um, Stephanie and I put together um, to give to the agents or bring somebody in. So like recently we had, you know, a lawyer come in to talk about yeah. things happening in the city. And on those, you know, the attendance is like 15. So okay. it really varies, but it's the ones the ones that are showing up, the ones that are asking questions and then taking yeah. their hearing, we're just seeing an improvement. You know, yeah. it's really helping 
have that. So that's also their, you know, another great spot for them, to, you know, to get in communication with us. Yeah. And the Slack, um, so for everyone who's listening, um, there's a whole bunch of tools like Facebook has their workplace, which is another version. Microsoft has theirs as well. Um, Slack was purchased by Salesforce. So it's now a Salesforce thing. Um, the, how do you guys organize your channels? Is everyone, are all the agents in, and then you have private channels for each, like, how does it, how do you guys have it set up? Cause I was curious about that. Totally. Yes. We have a bunch. I mean, I, not every agent is in every channel. Um, okay. We definitely have the, you know, standard general, which is, can be whatever random questions they have. We organize then a channel of our new listing where our listing manager will put every new listing she's putting in. We also have a sold channel. So we put in every time one of our transactions or listings go under contract. We then also have um, sales tips. So that's yep. where we organize, you know, different tips we have for them. We have a leads channel. So if it, you know, even though, you know, most of our lead sources, you know, have their, you know, rules of how they get distributed, we'll sometimes get the random call in or, you know, an agent has a lead they can't service. So they want to give out to so the leads channel that agents can, you know, pick up extra leads. Um, is that like, I don't want to say it's like phone duty, but is that sort of like phone duty? Is it like free for all or is it it's free for all? It's yeah, first come first serve. It's kind of an extra, you know, yeah. um, it's a, a, it's mainly, I would say it's mainly call-ins. Like I put like with our office, if, a, if someone just randomly calls in, um, you know, in that case, it's, it's not from a source that we have our standard rules yeah. for. Yeah. So it's first come first serve for that. Um, we also have, we have a happy hour channel, you know, nice. so organize some happy hours. Um, I'm just opening it up to see. So I always forget open yeah. houses um, to put our open, open houses in. Um, and then we also have a Zillow channel. So we, our team is part of the Zillow Flex program. Yep. Not sure if you're familiar. So we have a channel that we discuss items about that. Um, last year, we actually made a shift channel, you know, because it was, we had to shift our every way of life in the industry. So that was our channel where we talked about anything related to the shift and changes yeah. in our world last year. Um, and do a question on participation in Slack. You said they can call you, they can SMS, they can do all kinds of ways to get to you. Do they predominantly use Slack? I would say if it's a question where maybe there isn't one specific person to go to. So like if it's if it's a question about a transaction, obviously your best route is to go directly to the transaction manager, ask him, he's probably going to have the answer. But like if the agents have a question related to a deal and you know they just need some advice on it, I would say yes, because then everybody sees it and then anyone with any sort of knowledge will chip in. Yeah. So Slack is really cool because you can see that family part of our team happening where the agents are just offering up, you know, their knowledge when an agent yeah. is like, hey, if anyone encountered this or do you have do you have someone that could help me out with this? Or, you know, who's your favorite, you know, I don't even know, cleaner for a house because I have a different exactly. right enough clean, like things like that. So it okay. depend on the question. Um, but nine times out of ten, I would say yes. Do you guys also do some sort of um FAQ help desk style thing where someone can look up things like what's the Wi-Fi password or how do I do a 1031 exchange or what whatever those like sort of random repeat questions. Do you have something like that? I don't have like desk hours per se, but I am in yeah. the office every day for yeah. at least a couple hours. So yeah. again, the, if the agents see me, they know they could knock on my door and ask me a question. But um, I have a Google folder called team resources that okay. nine times out of 10 might have the answer to their question as well. It, whether yeah. it be here's the actual answer or here's who you can call to get the answer from. Got it. Got so it. That is where, you know, when a new agent joins, I'm like, if you are looking for something, I guarantee it's probably in there. And if it's not, then call me. And then I'm happy to, you know, yeah. get whatever it is that you need. So yeah. I try to get, I try to make it so that they have access to all the information and things they need so that they don't have to wait on somebody to be able to get it back. Yeah. You know, the agents are keeping us busy. You know, they, you know, we've already closed 270 transactions this year. So I'm like, you know, if, if it's something that you need right away, I'd rather you be able to get it than have to be like, Hey, can you get this? 
but then potentially have to wait if I'm in a meeting or, you know, if someone yeah. is not available. So that, that is, um, that's fantastic. How are you compared to last year? We are, we're on track to hit our goals for the year. So we're happy. We wanted to do 25% more in business this year. And we, after looking at the first two quarters are on track to do that. That's great. Um, so yeah, it's been exciting. You know, the agents are just rocking it. They've definitely did what they needed to do to shift with the market and where everything's yeah. at and also deal with the craziness of this year's market after we, you know, reopened. It was, I mean, I have to say, I, I know it was hard in our household, but I can imagine it was hard. Um, how did you deal with sort of the, I'll use this term. I don't know if it's the right term, but the stress, like the mental health stress of your team and the agents, how did you guys sort of help or address that? Yeah. Well, so that's when we started those meetings every Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, I was just, you know, we were so close where a lot of us, you know, pre COVID worked in the office day in and day out would see each other outside of work, you know, mostly every weekend. So I was really scared to lose just that, that, culture and family feeling with them if we were all separated and not talking. So we started those to really help stay top of mind and and let them know that we're there for them and whatever they need, you know, we can come out with, Um, you know, it was really hard because Philly, we were shut down for three months and they couldn't do anything. And so it was really scary. It was like, don't we, so we just had to, if we felt like if we could fill their days with things, you know, and, and give them those keep their days in, in schedule, that it would help them not, you know, kind of lose their day to day once they could open and, and start working. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lots it's, of happy hours on Zoom as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love those. Um, we've got a few questions. Um, one of the questions, it's an anonymous question. You can give me your name. Um, <laughs> it says, how is the structure set up with the three admins? Are they on salary? Are they part time? What? How do you guys deal with that? Yeah. So all three of us are full time. Mm-hmm. Um, the myself and our transaction manager, our salary yeah. and our listing manager is actually 1099. Okay. So I was 1099 for the first five years and yeah. only recently got two salary. And yeah. so with when we went to hire the listing manager. Because we weren't sure if it was going to work out, we yeah. we'd start off at a 1099, and then after a year, if things are going very well, um, which yeah. thankfully they are, then that would kind of be you know after your first year, kind of like a bonus after the first year. Like now you'll yeah. be switched to salary. Yeah, um, very so, cool. Yeah. Um, there's a question about the the tool that your coach um, turned you onto that gives you stats. What's it called? C T E B as in boy T E C as in cat. Okay. T as in Teresa. And then E as in excellence. And is that, is it dot com? Cause they're requesting. Yeah, actually, that's okay. a good question. That's a good question. You just go to CTE.com. You should see it. Something. Yeah. Just let me know. And then, um, I had another question, which actually I have two, uh, as we wrap up one is, What's your biggest challenge? Like, it sounds like, and from everything that I've heard, I mean, you are a super organized person and you've got really great experience and you're so affable, like you're, you're charming, you're easy to communicate with. What's your, what do you see your challenge in the next, you know, for the rest of the year and the next year? Oh, that's a good question. So like a, a personal challenge in my role or like a challenge yeah, personal life? related to work. Like, what do you like, you know, I'm often given tasks that I don't know how to do. So that would be a challenge for me, which is like, <laughs> you got to come up to speed and then hopefully be successful at it. And so I'm curious, you know, in your role, what do you see your, your big challenge going forward is? Yeah. So, you know, something, I guess, Something that my coach is, I guess this is the challenge because my coach has been wanting me to work on it and it's, and I've successfully pushed it away, but I don't. (laughs) Well, I'm bringing it back then. Yeah. For too much longer. Um, But she really wants me to have more control over the database. 
Mm-hmm. So um, what I would love to come up with and create is a what what she calls a client for life program. Okay. So, you know, our agents are really great at closing deals and, you yeah. know, some, some clients are very easy to just, you know, create that client for life and get their repeat business and get referrals out of them. But I do see that a weakness in our team is that a lot of our clients slip away and we're not communicating with them. So kind of making an automatic touch program for yeah. after the transaction, you yeah. know, to ensure that we're gaining as much business out of those clients as we can, you know, cause your database is where the business comes from. So yeah. continuously asking for those referrals is something that I want to incorporate more of with the team and just help take control of that database. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. it's so funny. We work so hard to get the leads and then not you, most people don't follow up with the leads. And then we work so hard to get the transaction and get so close to people and then never contact them until like their birthday. Exactly. Like it makes no sense. Oh, that's a, that's interesting. The, the, the last question that I have, and then there's one other, uh, one of the audience has a question um, is where do you see, like I, my observation is that more and more, um, teams, brokerages, brands are providing more and more services to agents. Mm-hmm. Where do you see this going? Is it like, yeah, I'll just leave it there. Like, what, what, where do you see? I mean, like, so much is going on in this industry. I'd be curious to hear your perspective of where, what do you see next? Yeah, you know, it's so true. Um, you know, I was even really surprised the first time I saw like an actual model of, you know, someone's thought of how a real estate team should be. And just the ratio of admin to agents. I was like, what, what could you actually have all those eight like admins be doing for these agents? Yeah. And, you know, now I see it's like, you know, we have the listing manager and the transaction manager and I'm like, Oh, but I actually like wish we could do more for the agents. Like I almost wish we could just take more off their plate. And um, I think it, I see it becoming that where maybe it is an industry, whereas when you're a real estate agent, you know, you don't have to do everything on your own. And yeah. maybe it's not so much like every real estate agent, it's their own business. Like if you're on a team, it's more of like, okay, we are giving you all these tools, but you don't have to worry about so much other stuff. You can just yeah. show up, do the work and, and move on. So I see it just becoming more automated. Yeah. You know, not it being that these agents are running around doing every little thing for every single deal that it's just going to be um, easier for these agents. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I do remember I was an agent a very long time ago at another high point in the market, you know, 2005 to 2008 before it crashed. And I, when I was an agent, you just used to, joined a brokerage and you, there was a list of tools, but no one even, at least my experience, no one onboarded you. Like there wasn't any training or very little training. And the tools that you got, you could use them if you wanted, but you didn't have, like, there was just like, it was sink or swim. I mean, that sort of was my experience. And I know that that's not sure. everyone's, but it really feels like it's very different. Like the, I may be self-selecting in the folks that I interview, right? Because I'm getting, I'll speak to you and you'll recommend someone I should talk to. Um, I'm talking to people that are really focused on serving agents and providing great service. So that may be a skewed view of the world. Um, but I do see that the customer is expecting so much more in their experience with everything, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we're everyone's used to digital paying now, like now yeah. past the pandemic. And so they expect things to be fast and not glitchy and you know, a great experience. And at the same time, it seems like real estate is really accelerated in that direction, you know, and the maturity of teams like yours that are organized to provide great service, not only to the agent, but to the end customer. Uh, that's sort of exciting to see. I'm curious to see where it goes. No, it's um, true. I mean, if it was five years ago, yeah. you know, I would, an agent would join our team. I'd meet with them, you know, that first day, get them just on the systems, what they needed. And then it was just like, all right, call me if you have questions. Yeah. You know, 
Now a new agent joins our team and I, it's a detailed 30, 60, 90 plan for the first 90 days where they're meeting with me once a week. And I'm making sure that to speed, you know, to make sure that after 90 days, you, you, you'll be out there and just closing deals. So, I mean, it's, it's true. It's the different happening. It's, it's crazy. Um, one, so one thing it's, it's ctebiz.com. Yes. Yeah. I couldn't, I didn't get a chance to. No, no problem. Someone, someone let me know. Um, and then I think that there's another question, which is the folks that are on the team, are any of them licensed? The admins? Yeah. So I'm, I'm a licensed agent, um, but I have my license hung as a referral agent, just since I don't have enough time to be, to be taking on sales. I can um, imagine. I can. <laughs> Our transaction manager is also licensed. He's been okay. licensed the entire time he's been in the Great. role. Our listing manager is not. Okay. Um, and that was not a requirement we had. Yeah. Um, I almost preferred if they weren't licensed because no. I didn't want them to think it was, oh, I'll take this position and then in a year. Yeah. yeah. And in a year just be a full time agent. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. You know, if if you know Michelle, our listing manager, if she ever decided in the future she wanted to get licensed, we we would support it a hundred percent. But yep. yep, understood. Um, what's the best if someone wants to reach out to you? Uh, what's the best way to platform social? I'm gonna uh, email email. I am in my email every day. I okay. respond immediately. Um, that is the best way. It's just Teresa at the Summers Team dot com. Awesome. Um, I'd be happy if anyone has any questions, if they wanted to connect individually, um, be happy to. Teresa, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Uh, it seems like the response from some of the questions that others have appreciated it too. Thank you. 